Welcome to Spore and Sprout, where I will be documenting and uploading content related to mushroom growing. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my technique on how I expand one liquid culture syringe into an unlimited supply of liquid culture syringes. For this method, you're going to need a few items. A jar, a pressure cooker or a canner, micro pour tape, a hammer and nail, measuring cups, Caro light syrup, water, isopropyl alcohol, gloves, mask, and a lighter, a liquid culture syringe from SporeAndSprout.com, a sharpie and pen, and a magnetic stirrer or a marble. The first step in this video is going to be pretty simple. It involves poking a hole in the center of your jar lid with the hammer and nail. The purpose this serves is, to an, is an inoculation point for your syringe to enter the jar. Now, you can use any size jar that you want, and in this video I'm using pint-sized jars. Okay, so now that you poke the holes in your jars, it's time to measure up the liquid that goes inside them. Now for the size I'm using today, which is pint sized, I'm measuring up one and a half cups of warm water and a tablespoon of Caro light corn syrup. If you're using a different size jar, the proportions are going to be a little bit different. I usually go with the rule of thumb that 4 milliliters of Caro syrup per 100 milliliters of water. So 300 milliliters of water equals 12 milliliters of Caro, which is almost a tablespoon. You can use a syringe to get it exact if you, if you need to. Mycelium doesn't like higher than 4% sugars and thrives off 3% even, but 4% is pretty much dead on. Now that you have the correct measurement of warm water and caro corn syrup added to the jars, grab a spoon and stir it to help dissolve the syrup into the water. The next step is going to be adding your magnetic stir bar into the jar. Now if you don't have a magnetic stir, you can use a marble. This is going to help disperse and break up the mycelium when it forms a dense cloud after growing for a while inside the jar. To prevent contamination from entering the jar and to help with air exchange, we are going to be using micropore tape or medical tape over top of the holes that we made with the hammer. After they are covered, they are ready to be sterilized. Add a few inches of water in the bottom of the pressure cooker. This is going to help build up steam and pressure inside of it. Put it on medium-high heat and set a timer for 30 minutes. It will start sizzling and it will be very hot, but when the time is up, you want to turn off the heat and let it sit until you stop hearing the sizzling. And when the pressure drops, you can open it and then take your jars out. This step is the most important in the method. Make sure you use isopropyl alcohol to wipe down the jar lids and the surrounding area as well as your hands and anything else that you think may be dirty. Make sure you're wearing a mask over your mouth because your breath has a lot of bacteria inside of it. Use a lighter to sterilize the needle 
on your syringe. Let it cool down an appropriate amount of time before injecting your jar with it. Insert the needle into the hole that you made with the hammer and nail and inject two cc's of liquid into the jar. Immediately after, you're going to want to grab your micropore tape and cover the hole that you just made through the first layer of micropore tape. Use a sharpie to label the top of the jar with the species that you're injecting. Now that the hard part is over, the only thing left to do is test the stir bar that you put in the bottom or the marble. If you had a stir bar, put it on your magnetic stir and make sure that it forms a tornado inside of the jar. If you don't use a magnetic stir or a marble, the mycelium will clump together and form a small dense cloud at the bottom of your jar and it will barely grow because it needs to be broken apart and dispersed evenly and to gain more surface area to grow. Do this at least once a day and in about two or three weeks the whole jar will be full of mycelium. This method effectively turns one syringe into hundreds of syringes. And that's how you make a liquid culture. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below.